Hey everyone, and welcome to the Freedom Life Collab. This podcast is made up of unique voices and real conversations about leading, laughing, loving, and living freely. We are so glad that you could join us, and our hope is that we can help you experience freedom. So let's hear about today's topic. All right, y'all, what's up? My name is James. I'll be your host today. Welcome back to the Freedom Life Collab. We are at FLC Studios. I'm just waiting Woo-woo. for like a graphic or something to be on one of the walls. Bam. How about a Jamaican air horn? Like, bah, 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 bah. That's good. That's we it. That. Okay. Post, post Wait. <laughs> post production. We got it. We got it. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. I'm so, listening. So we're going to get started early today. Go ahead. I'm oh, listening. Sorry. Go ahead, James. Uh, we are just jumping back into this is episode <laughs> Two of episode two, podcast. episode two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we awesome. got yeah, it, buddy. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> episode two, I love it. I love it. So we get there. We get there. Get there. Get me here. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Best for last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. As, as you're saying, slap oh, in. Over the host. Over the host. I know. Air hey, hug, yo, well, hug. welcome. I think if you don't have it in your yeah. life, you need to get some folks you can laugh with. Yeah, um, man. Some folks you can joke with, some people you can live uh, and hang out with. Um, today, we're going to jump into a topic that is really kind of sensitive, kind of like a probably a big deal. Um, and so I think if you've got kids in the in the room, you might want to just put them in another room just in case we, I don't think it's going to get graphic, yeah, but yeah. I want to make sure that we are respecting it's just um, heavy, though, you. It's sure. just it's yeah. pretty heavy. Yeah. So we're, we're jumping into a topic. Uh, today, work-life balance. We'll start there. Uh, back in like the 1970s or 80s, like this term became so popular about work-life balance, and it's the lack of opposition between work and other life roles. So now, and everybody being uh, a millennials, millennials taking over the workforce, like this mm-hmm. is a topic that's huge. Work-life balance. How do we balance the two? Is there a way to balance the two? Why don't we kind of just uh, go around and, and think through? Here's a question for you guys. How how busy are you these days? And, and <laughs> what are all the things you're involved in? Let's start question? there. Let's I know, start right? there. You're going to ask me that in front of my <laughs> boss? <laughs> well, I know. And look, we just had this conversation oh, off yeah. the air, so now I'm bringing it in. Yeah, I'm very I busy. I, I never stopped. We might want to save Rev for like right towards the end, so we can kind of share like our somewhat light of a workload, and then you just share what's going Man. on. Talk about our light momentary I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Momentary. <laughs> right. So repeat the question again. So what, what was what's it? going on in our lives? So I probably most of the folks listening here um, have a lot going on. And so I, I just, this might be a great point of connection. What what are all the things you're involved in right now? How how busy are you yeah. right now? You want to start, G? Uh, sure, I'll go first. <laughs> uh, right now, um, the biggest thing that my world centers around is uh, my wife. Hope you're watching this. Hey, baby. Right, boys. Hey man, it's Thursday. Tomorrow's date night. I gotta <laughs> make sure. You, you better stack, stack the decks. Stack the deck. Oh, that's awesome. But, uh, <laughs> that's one way you balance. There you hey, go. Yeah, there, there you go. go. There you go. No, but I, um, outside of uh, doing my best to uh, uh, to live a healthy married life, uh, right now our music ministry is preparing for a live recording. Nice. No. So Can't that wait. is consuming all of my all of my time yeah. away from my wife in yeah. Jesus' name. Um, in addition to that, uh, our church is involved with a, 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 a local community group of pastors and churches uh, called the Virginia Unity Project. Mm-hmm. We've got a worship night coming up soon, so we're preparing for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Got some travel dates. Just try to make sure that I'm available to other, you know, worship leaders and you know musicians in the area. Right. Um, that sort of thing. So a lot of meetings, a lot yeah. of practices, a yeah. lot of right. you know that sort of thing. So uh, I, I I don't think I ever really stop working. I think I just work differently yeah that makes sense absolutely makes perfect sense yeah absolutely yeah i think i echo that too just in the sense of of meetings i think a lot of people naturally always you know ask the question like what do pastors do you know throughout the week like you just read your bible you so you so you work one hour a week you just gotta gotta pray and then you just know you do yeah so what what is it you just study the word like all day long i know yeah so a lot yeah a lot of it just with my role being a associate pastor you know i'm I'm overseeing weekends and so uh ensuring that from parking lot to pulpit that we're good to go working with um apprentices and volunteers team leaders a lot of those one-on-one meetings i think you know often it can seem like 
I mean, it, it's just conversation, but really it's discipleship, it's mentorship. I mean, you're, you're laying out pipelines for people yeah. to, to be able to grow in their leadership and development, uh, which is something that, you know, I know James and I, we have constant conversations oh, about man. leadership development. Oh, yeah. Um, but just, you know, going back and forth on that, uh, also helping to oversee a lot of our, our projects we have going on. You know, the, even this podcast, mm -hmm. working with a great group of guys, with Randy and Eric, who's behind the scenes, uh, making sure we get all this stuff edited and, uh, and, and just working out. I mean, just... Uh, constant graphic support, things like that. So all the could seem like small nuance things that you know are kind of secondary, maybe in our minds, but uh, really are some of the first things we normally see um, uh, outside of just the meetings back and forth, and then also preaching support. Yeah, weekends, yep. trying to you know balance. Then got a two year old. Yeah, um, my wife's a business owner, yep. so helping with that stuff too. So uh, life is fun, man. I think that balance and that juggle of it all, and just being able to. To enjoy it, I think that's kind of the thing. I saw somebody say um, the other day was just enjoying the journey. You know, yeah. reminding myself, yeah. enjoy that journey yeah. in the midst of everything that you you get to do, not that you have to do. You know, yeah. so yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, we'll, we'll turn it over to uh, Rev. What you got going, on? <laughs> man? <I'm> just, <laughs> what do you got going on? These living days? the dream, baby. That's it. Uh, Another day in paradise. <laughs> Another day in paradise. <laughs> I get to. I don't got to. That's yeah, for sure. No, I uh, yeah, so I say a little busy, uh, but because of you guys, it's a great team. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure the people listening to the podcast or watching know that I'm a senior pastor of Freedom Life's three campuses. We have one here, one in San Antonio, that we've been uh, putting a lot of effort into uh, getting into the next phase down there. That's awesome. We got a yeah. new squad yeah, down there. Vision, you're heading down there actually tomorrow, right? Yeah. And yep. Randy's down there right now. Right now. So yeah, so we're yep. doing that, and then we got the online thing. Um, flconline.org. Um, so over those three campuses. And then uh, earlier this year, uh, my mentor pastor approached me about uh, coming on staff with his church as well, not in moving away from Freedom Life at any level, but just being a part-time role for them up there. That has grown into me being right. the associate senior pastor of the chapel in Chicago, in addition to uh, the senior pastor of Freedom Life. And they have we have up there seven campuses, um, uh, across northern Chicago suburbs, and then I'm also currently on the front end of a training network that I'll be a part of called Uptick, where we'll be uh, Uptick Catalyst, where we'll be training people, uh, pastors mm -hmm. in uh, this area in the um, 757 area. We're going to spend a year training them to be multicultural church pastors. So, awesome. what that looks like, and that's a three year commitment that yeah. I just I'm on the front end of now. So, I'm part of that coaching network as well. In addition to that, no, no. Uh, but what I really, what I really love to do the most is actually I have an awesome wife, five kids, and our oldest is married and starting his own life. So he's up in Richmond. Our second oldest is 21. He just got into a management program where he works, and so he's on his way out of the house. Yeah. Uh, and then, but we do have a senior in high school this year who we're trying to help get ready for college. And uh, uh, yeah, Eli's a senior this year. And then my my one daughter is 15, going on 25. So. Uh, <laughs> Full time. She's funny too, man. She was yeah, cracking yeah. me up, man. But anyway, <laughs> youngest son Ty. He's. Um, I try to be his fishing, fishing buddy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you know all that stuff, all the rhythms. Uh, you know. Yeah. It's it's all there all the time. Yeah. So I mean, what it sounds like, you got a lot going on. What you doing? Not a whole lot, man. I just kind of hang out here. Uh, <laughs> I got. Uh, <laughs> I don't think my job is as stressful. I, I don't think it's even stressful. I, I think it's more so. Um, I've got starters. I am a husband, a father. I'm married for almost 10 years. Well, no, it's been over 10 years. Sorry, babe. Um, over 10 years. Got three kids, seven, five, and three. Uh, three girls. And then I do, like, family ministry stuff. So working with uh, some of our, work with our children's pastor and our student pastor, just trying to keep things aligned and making sure it's working with the vision of the church and all that other stuff. And uh, working with, directly with young adults, mm -hmm. as well as some of our internship uh, development and apprentice yeah, yeah, development man. and leadership uh, stuff. So we we have tons of conversations about that, a but um, yeah, man, it, it's that, it's just light work, light work, right? Yeah, um, I, I'm just giggling because last time we were here, yeah, because we were just talking about the, the kind of things that you deal with that most people, you know, right, right. when they when they they assume that one hour a week thing or whatever, yeah, right. like all the little things that had a, we were making jokes because last time we were here, we we actually had to revolve reset our whole day mm -hmm. because the, the lawn cutting crew at this property showed up Thus. and <laughs> as you can hear this, okay. is, a, this is a different day at a different time switch the time <laughs> so that we would intentionally avoid 
the folks that were gonna be out there running mowers oh, and oh, leaf yeah. mowers. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Like, were they in the group chat for this? Yeah. Yeah. Be, yeah. So oh, coordinating oh, five yeah. schedules, uh, making sure I'm in town, making sure we're all available and. See, see, these are the moments that you just got to giggle because the there's really nothing else you can do. So we're going to just keep recording. Yeah, and you, might, know, you might hear some. Uh, it's real. That's real ministry. That's real, real life. Yeah. Like yeah. when you yeah. got real something life. going on, like it just this happens. is how it is. Yep. So you got this room that we have built for this with lighting and nice microphones <laughs> and all these cool lights and paint and all Somebody that stuff. Somebody out there weed eating just ready to go. Face 2, soundproofing. I know. So that is, to me, this is so real and it's such real time. But this is the life in ministry. This is yeah, to me, yeah. Yeah. that's the part that we really get to in terms. Of what, what what do you you know when you talk about work life balance? Mm. That you know, I would I would just let me I would just say because yeah, because I was listening to you speak, but I know you well enough to know what all you're doing and you're involved mm. in. Right. But I also now that I'm hearing this, how often is that our reality? Like yeah. we're trying to be yeah, present good. in a moment. That's, good. Right? that's real good. And all of a sudden, we're getting a text about someone's life who's getting train wrecked right, right. now. Absolutely. We're getting a so we're we're in a meeting, mm -hmm. and we have to field a phone call yep. about something going on in someone's situation, and we've got to internalize that or compartmentalize it to be come back into that room and be yep. fully present for this person, yep. right. yep. knowing that there's a crisis waiting for us yep. as soon as we can finish this moment. Yep. To give that attention to another yeah, person, I think. Good. So anyway, uh, we no. can circle back to that, but I just that's that's I, I mean, real, man. Let's let's lean in there. I but think, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. So just jump in on that. I think about it. You know, we we often want to control our environments as mm -hmm. much as we can, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. in that's reality, mm -hmm. you know, like there is no perfect circumstance. Yeah. And I think we we yeah. try to organize our days. You know, we try to balance our lives, yeah. trying to yeah. just make things perfect. But with reality comes those you know, what we can call distractions mm -hmm. or you know divine interruptions or whatever it is. I think the 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 wisdom in all of it is just how do you roll with the punches? You know, yeah. how do you yeah. how do you adapt? Yeah. You know, and how do you uh, um, alternate or change or adjust? You yeah. know, so that you can. And, and I think that's what we talk about with the Word of God. Like, how do you apply those things to your life yeah. when you're trying to get these balances and these? And I think in our minds, naturally, what we do is once everything. If I could just think about peace, I can make everything peaceful. Yeah. It's like that's yeah. not. You could apply that to any aspect of the fruit of the spirit yeah. but in reality things are going to spin mm -hmm. you, that's when the word of god really needs to be placed in yeah. there so that we can you know kind of yeah. keep ourselves yeah. balanced or in a good rhythm you know? I, I mean i think that that that's the word the, the word that you're hitting on is is what i'm thinking of is that honestly i'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you guys a question but i have an answer already so we can yeah. have a little controversy but is there a such thing as work-life balance uh, personally i think no Personally, I think it's no, mm. um, because balance is this this myth or it's this thing that we're talking about is that we're trying to hold two important things at the same level of importance That's true, at the yeah. same That's time. Good point. Good point. It's impossible. Like I think right. about, I have a wife and, a, and three kids, and so I love my family, but in order to serve my family adequately, I also have to uh, go to work and make money. Right, right, I right. love what I do for work to make money, but if I take time away from my work and or you know money, it's like like I'm now like balancing these two things that are impossible to balance, and so I think a, a better word for for what we're experiencing is not balance, but rhythm. Absolutely right. So right. rhythm involves right. us so we're all actually into that. being into. <laughs> yeah. It involves us being in the tension. It involves yeah. us yeah, saying, that's, you know, yeah, I can word. hold these two things in tension. in tension. And there are some times where I'm like, okay, right now when I leave work or when I leave here, I'm going to spend time with my wife. Pastor Brian said it earlier. I'm going to spend time with my wife right. on Friday for date night. But all throughout the work, I'm, I'm throughout the week, I'm hustling. I'm right. doing what I got to do. Good and point, I, I think it's just this idea of tension. And, and as I'm talking about this, it makes me think that our pursuit of balance is actually a pursuit of perfection. Yep. And I think that what happens is we find ourselves in this cycle of mm -hmm. guilt because we're trying to go for perfection. Right. I, I've got to get work-life balance. And and yep. as we're seeing through our society, as we're seeing after article after article, it's impossible. That's true. I don't know. You you guys weigh in. I'm, I'm pretty passionate about it. But what, right, what yeah. are you guys thinking? Yeah, I, I kind of giggle when I hear this idea of balance. <laughs> I think it's true. Uh, I, th I remember when we did a sermon illustration where we built a balance beam on the stage. Mm. And like, 
I had to get like guardrails basically so mm. I wouldn't fall. I'm like, I'm just not that, I don't have right. that kind of balance. That's right, you know, right, like, that's right. Make liberals all But 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 when you think about the word rhythm, I love that. I think about, you know, you know, working out a lot. You know, like when we go to the gym, mm. you do presses and then you do pulls. You know, like we talk about this a lot. You know, we worked mm-hmm. out together. Mm-hmm. Occasionally, it, back in the day, we worked out together. When you were get, before you got engaged, you got the membership. You got, you got, ready. got the membership. You got, you got, you got it. it. Like, really right. Right. All right, Hold, full full disclosure. I, I got a gym membership when I planned to propose to my now wife, and you were coming to the gym with me, man, faithfully, thrice a week, thrice a week, <laughs> until she said yes. And then I was like, where's my workout partner? I quit. Anyway. I, quit. I quit. She said, yes, hey, I quit. Yeah, right. He said, Pastor, it yes. served its purpose. Yeah. 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 But, Seasons. But, yeah. That's right. But if you've been to the, you know, if we worked out together, you know that I like to do presses and pulls. And that to me, right. you know, you, you know, uh, you do something that's going that direction, and then you got to do something that's coming this direction so you have a balanced yeah. workout, right? And you yeah. keep your blood flow, move, yeah. flow moving. I, I think about uh, balance or I really think about rhythm in terms of, you know, we've talked about emotionally healthy spirituality. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. talked about emotionally healthy leadership, the stuff yep. by Pete Scazzario. Yep, I don't, I'm yep, probably yep, saying yep. it wrong, but yep. incredible stuff. Scazzaro, yep. uh, and he talks about the rhythm of Sabbath. Yep. You know, that changed my life. And I think I want to quote from his book because I didn't come up with this. This is from his stuff. He said, you know, it's the difference when we have a rhythm of Sabbath every single week, mm. a 24-hour window where you are doing get to's not got to that's good, right yeah, yeah. and he said yeah. that it's 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 takes us from this idea of resting from our work to working from our rest yes. right like that yeah. that that's the the approach to a healthy sustainable rhythm is that when we sabbath with the lord first mm. then like mm. what we do is the byproduct of that not the substitute for it mm. so right. yeah that's a good yeah point. yeah you're hitting on some things i think that it, you, this so I guess my question would be, how do we know when our life, or what are some indicators that our life is out of rhythm mm-hmm. or about out of balance, wherever we want to say it in this context? What, what are the indicators of, uh, I don't know, unbalanced life or a, a life out of rhythm, a life living in attention? What are man. the indicators? Uh, man, I was just thinking about this uh, the other day, trying to, again, manage you know, all the things you got going on in the spin. And when people are constantly like, hey, I need your attention, or hey, I need you, your input on this, or <laughs> just that, that lawnmower, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But when you're, try, when you're trying to balance, you know, how do you do that? Um, I, I think one, one of the indicators for me, I know, is when I'm not doing it well, trying to get that rhythm, is when I get easily irritated at something that's really, really simple. You know? Yeah. Something yeah. I'm like, like, like a lawnmower. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but something that, right. <laughs> something that's so simple, and I'm yeah. like, why, why would I do that? You know, I think yeah. it's in those moments that my, yeah, my, my perspective is off. You know, mm-hmm. again, I'm, I'm trying to find the perfect situation. I'm trying to make sure everything lines up right. You know, I'm trying to time this and be here for that and yeah. fix all those things. Um, yeah. I had it been since the other week where I meant to contact somebody but it just slipped my mind and then it happened again I'm like oh my gosh I had to go to that person and I was like listen I need to apologize to you like I need to let you know I I was totally off my rhythm you know I just didn't so just admitting the fault and being able to kind of get back you know to the place where I need to be so um, so I heard irritability forgetfulness those are absolutely yeah yeah. Yeah. just saturated absolutely you get get so overwhelmed with things that you just start to kind of you can feel like dropping the ball you know and and, I mean one of the things that I just throw this in there one of the things I recognize because I'm not perfect and I do that often is to be able to admit acknowledge those things and then to kind of course correct rather than sit back and over be overwhelmed and beat yourself right. up about how you made these mistakes mm. i don't know it just mm. oftentimes i feel like you kind of can get through those tough moments yeah. quicker yeah. by just admitting where you are you yeah, know? yeah. I, I, I would i would be just to be transparent and vulnerable too i think the the other thing that i've noticed you know the the way that we struggle with sin mm. like the more exhausted or the more i think that's why rest is so important right you know there's a reason Satan showed up to Jesus after 40 days of fasting in the desert. Come right? on, Rev. That's good. He, he was vulnerable in his exhaustion. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that, so for me, for example, something I've wrestled with for years is eating, uh, overeating or eating for pleasure. Mm. Uh, and that has led to me being overweight most of my life. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's some of us, we uh, there have been moments when I was younger right. where that was an esu- issue with my sexuality, like you know, like 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 my passion, my yeah. uh, and struggle. I remember being a young man before I got married and wrestling with lust, wrestling with like, man, I gotta, how do I stay pure and Real. who do I gotta talk to? Yeah. And those are when we are stressed, we we tend to go to things that are a part of our appetite, right. but we misuse them. And yeah. so for me, right. I. 
I, in full transparency, I was talking to my, my mentor pastor about this this past week that uh, I have found myself turning back to food for comfort. And mm. I've gained back about nine pounds in the past two and a half months. Mm. And I have found myself literally making these decisions like, man, what a long day. You know what? I'm just going to eat some pizza. Right. And mm. instead of just calling that out as sin, because what I'm doing is I'm taking something God created right. with good intention. Right. But I am misusing it. Mm. I have decided that's going to be my comfort. Yeah. That's going to be, and I didn't even realize I did that till the first time I did a prolonged fast. And I was like, man, I'm a, actually a food addict. Yeah. There's a difference between, you see, the thing, the subtle thing is it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. We're one of the fattest countries in the world. So I could sit in a room full of pastors and commit gluttony all day. Yeah, yeah. And Except no one will even know. It. No one will even care. Right. Yeah. No one. Yeah. Right. I, if I lined up a, a line of cocaine to snort, I guarantee right. you there'd be a conversation. Like, wait, 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 hold on now, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> so the, yeah, exactly. the, the subtle thing is when when we when we indulge appetites inappropriately, That's good. because we can hide in print, plain sight doing. That's true, that. man. Yeah. Some people do it with working out, yeah. right? True. It's like an obsession. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a healthy thing, but it gets it it's gets like, lopsided. Absolutely, yeah. Right? And then it, and all of a sudden, it, now it's associated with how they view the, every part of their body and Man. then how they view. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, I think those are the Real. subtle things. We could talk True. about the big sins. We know stay away from stuff that's going to derail your ministry. Absolutely. But, absolutely. man, you know, overeating right. is going to kill me early. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Absolutely. I think, I think too, as you were talking, Rev, it's, it's for me, uh, personally, I almost... So just thinking about transparency, I was in my office last week, um, and I just had this moment uh, where I was talking to Rev, we're sitting uh, across from each other, and I finally just uh, broke, like finally cried after like months of holding on yeah. right. to uh, this stuff. And and some of the stuff, as I, as I look back on that journey um, of being exhausted, uh, the things that kept coming up to me was I was involving myself in like escapism behavior, mm -hmm. right? Like so things like, man, I'm just gonna binge watch this show. Right. Like I don't want right, to right. think about this. I, I, you know, I used to play video games a lot. Let me just dive into this right. video game. Let me right. just play this until my eyes fall out, type of thing. Let me just, you know, and it's a good. It may be good shows. It may be good games. But it's like right. let me keep doing it. And so that's one thing for me. It's the it's the it's the escapism behavior. It's also uh, the other thing is the physical indicators. Like there are physical indicators in our bodies for me. Right. Um, just realizing I was in this season where I was grinding my teeth while I slept. Yeah, that's good. Like it was this real like I would wake up and my mouth was hurting because yep. of just stress and I wow. and I wasn't yeah. paying attention to yeah. it. And then the other part, and this is the one that again that 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 subtle thing because um in that story of Jesus being in the wilderness, there's three things that he's dealing with. It's the appetite, it's the approval, and mm -hmm. it's ambition. Yeah, yeah. And so, so yep. uh, he, he has the appetite, oh, but then we've got this approval piece and this is where I, I wrestle with often is that when I'm stressed, my, my my knee-jerk reaction is, I'm going to make this happen. Yeah. I need to show yeah. everybody that I can do this. I want to I want to win this. And so, like Kyle, you were saying, it's this unhealthy thing. Like, why am I, yeah. why am I like pursuing this so much? Why right, am I right. doing this stuff? So, yeah, man, I, I don't know if, if anybody want to add into that, but that's good. Man, that's great. What yeah. do you guys, I just, I would like to kick that around the room. Yeah. Could you said, the, uh, you said appetite, approval, and ambition. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. I think we've talked a little bit about appetite. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, can we talk about approval? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's something that that you know I know for years of my life defined me was mm, right. uh, the fear of rejection. Yeah. You know, and that yeah. like, in ministry that'll eat you up and spit sure. you out, right? Yeah, I well, mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, and think about I mean we just heard about another pastor who yep. was, who was taking his own life yep. and uh, yep. who yep. had publicly yep. uh, previously publicly spoke out against mental had uh, own health disorders yeah. and had an organization yeah. right, right. Mm -hmm. and commit suicide. I mean, yep. this this is, it's <clears> common, right? And that's I mean it's common. Among uh, military vets and active yeah. duty military, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think that's limited to ministry. But uh, let me just say this, and then if yeah, we could, so and I don't want to dump, dump the conversation, but I, if I could just set up a, a conversation here, sure. And then we've already talked about like the, the appetite, how we yeah. turn to yeah. appetites, Certainly. right? But yeah. but I would love to then transition this to ambition and, and approval because. Yeah. So when I was in counseling in 2015, I had like this whole breakdown where I was like my body, I just had what was later described as stress-related fatigue syndrome. Mm -hmm. No clue about it. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got introduced mm -hmm. to the stuff from emotionally healthy leadership right. to a counselor. My doctor looked at me and said, if you were 10 years older, you would have had a massive heart attack or a mental breakdown and mm -hmm. been institutionalized. Wow. Mm -hmm. The reason wow. that you didn't get to that is because of your age. Wow. Mm -hmm. And wow. then she, I just, it was a wake-up call for me that I was, I was carrying too much stress in unhealthy ways didn't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. So since then, I, for example, that commitment to a 24-hour Sabbath, you know, in the last four days, I have already worked 40 hours. Wow. 
in four days. But one of those days was 24 hours of Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So actually, I've worked 40 hours of three days of work. Mm -hmm. But right in the middle, of that, I'm like, nope, Monday, I'm taking my Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And so that's why mm -hmm. I have a, a wind, right? But mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so the, to circle all this together, when I was in counseling, I learned that the number one field for stress-related fatigue mm -hmm. syndrome, mental breakdowns, heart attacks, anything related to stress mm -hmm. is first responders. Wow. Yeah, it makes sense. Police, yeah. firefighters, Absolutely. and military are including that as well. That's the number one like career field. Wow. The number two career field is ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jeez. the way my, my counselor described it was because of guilty knowledge. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like first responders, they see things the rest of the world doesn't see. They deal with yep. a level of evil the rest yep. of the world doesn't deal with. Yep. Guess what? So do we. Yeah. Mm. So, so but the mm. way that, for example, approval. Mm -hmm. I thought about this earlier that we we often as ministers are going to face public judgment about decisions that we have to be private about the circumstances that created those Jeez. decisions. Mm -hmm. Very Jeez. True. Everybody has an opinion. Jeez. Yeah. So the question becomes, what happens when people don't mm -hmm. like the decision without the information? Sure. And you have to sit on the information to honor the people and honor their children, honor their wives, honor right. whatever, right. to protect them. You have to take it on the chest. How does that translate to when you run into mm. approval? Yeah. Mm. Mm. So let me just kind of dro drop that. No, I, I, just to jump in on that, Rev, you know, I thought about um, just how often, like, ministry is misunderstood. Like, and, and leadership, they say it often, leadership is lonely. Because the tough decisions that we have to make and the amount of information you have to process through and to be able to counsel people and to be there in those moments, it's a little difficult sometimes. And you really want to represent Christ the best way you possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. You want uh, people maybe for whatever reason to approve of your decision and how you do it because you want to lead people well. Right. I mean, most people want to be great leaders who lead people really well, lead them to the cross and, and want people to know, especially ones that they're shepherding, mm -hmm. hey, I'm doing the best I can with what I have and moving forward in that. One of the things the Lord spoke to me the other day personally mm -hmm. is I was kind of just praying through. I didn't think about it as approval mm -hmm. much now uh, until right, right now where I was kind of just hanging out, walking around, taking some time just to kind of pray. And I just kind of came to this moment where I told the Lord, God, I'm not worried about being recognized. I just want to please you. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even, I don't even, if people recognize me as a good leader or a bad leader or, <clears throat> excuse me, based on whatever they think, I just want to please you with everything that I do. And, and I went back to that quote I, I've heard over and over again, like, just do this for an audience of one. Mm -hmm. Do this for an audience of one. Do the best, you know, with what you have and the best you can and look to please him in everything. And, I, and yeah. it's constantly been something I'm trying to do every single day. Mm -hmm. How can I just be better today than I was yesterday? How do I, mm -hmm. you know, not let the, you know, we always say the loudest booze come from the cheapest seats. Yeah. Right. You know, how yeah, do I, wow. how do I not let those no booze, yeah, yeah, get, not get in my ear. Yeah. Are they wanting to yeah. get exactly. loud? Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. just, but just that type of rhythm, constantly, you know, telling yourself the truth rather than allowing the, the whispers of the lies or negativity to kind of mm -hmm. get into your head. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And and I wonder too. So let if I could, man, please. I just I'm on this now. I'm like, this good. I'm this like, is good. I got a, a what it's for, you know, man. This is great. So we're working on this album, mm -hmm. writing songs, mm -hmm. and that's been a collaborative process. Yeah. How does this pl the, the 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 approval temptation piece mm -hmm. play in when you are an artist and you're creative as our worship pastor and overseeing this thing? How do how do how do you see that in maybe in your own life or in your team or? Uh, you know, or just in that process as trying to create something Man. Mm -hmm. that you're going to present to the, the church and to the mm -hmm. body of Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there is does that come into to the equation? Yeah, I think um, I think I can kind of see this on. Uh, I think I see it from both ends of the spectrum because I'm still uh, in the early development stages of my writing like writing capability. Right, right. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in songwriting. Mm. Um, and so because that's not a muscle I've used much, I don't have a lot of confidence in yeah. it. Um, and so what happens is, is that's a good point. what I, I, just me personally, what I tend to do is sometimes I feel like I over collaborate. Mm -hmm. I'll ask for so mm. many opinions because I'm afraid of uh, like, yeah. if I make this decision, is it going to be good enough? Right. Yeah. And so I'll have ideas that I know God gave me in the moment. Yeah. I'll hear from God clearly. And then I run it through the filter of my insecurity. And now I over collaborate and I ask a whole bunch of people mm. to approve what it yeah. is that I know God gave That's good, me. Yeah, That's good. Good. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm 
trying to be aware of that. But then on the other hand, I've seen people who are so confident in what they do that they under collaborate. Yeah, that, they yeah. that could be a whole people. podcast yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be a whole podcast, podcast. Right. Yeah. Right. That they under collaborate. You know, yeah, it's like I know what I do is good. You know, I've seen I, like right now I'm 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 in a I, I'm watching a lot of music uh, like documentaries and watching a lot of concert yeah. films yeah. and just seeing what other people are doing. And I've seen documentaries on songwriters and musicians, and they're like, I got the resume to prove that I can write a hit. So. I write the hit and I bring it to the artist and they sing it the way I gave it to them. Mm. It's like, uh, well, like, you yeah. know, they under collaborated right, because right, they were right. so confident in what they were what they were doing. So I think it definitely plays in hugely with the creative process, yeah. especially in the arts, because we invest so much of who we are into what we do. Mm-hmm. When somebody doesn't approve of what we did, we think that they disapprove of us as I'm a person. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to say, hey, I don't like what you did, but I still like you. Yeah, You're yeah. dope, but yeah. the song you wrote wasn't it. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. And yeah, yeah. so I'm learning how to be in those moments where I come up with a lyric and it's like, eh, I think there's a better way to say that, but you're still a good person. Right. Yeah. I still love you. Who yeah. you are is not yeah. what you do. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Can, exactly. I, can I ask that question? Because you hit on that. something I think was really big. How, how do we, and maybe this is kind of an extension of that question how do we separate the person from the product and Mm -hmm. and do we do that and is it when is it healthy and when is it not yeah I, i love that question too because it's like the tension is who you are is not what you do, but you typically put who you are in In what what you you do. do. Yeah. And so it's this especially in an environment or a career field where 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 you are impacting yes you're interacting with crowds and groups that that healthy things grow, right? So it's like Yeah, so the sphere continues to grow, right? So how do you how do you disassociate those two? Uh, Is that a segue to number three, ambition? Yeah, (laughs) I mean, think about think about the field we're in right now as Mm -hmm. ministers, yeah, as leaders, and how much of that, how much of social media is influenced right now, sure, or influence, I should say, influencing our career field. Yeah, you know, where people are trying to build platforms, they're trying, you know, it's yeah. I don't know. For me, I always think about. I don't know where I heard it. I, I, I'm, it's not original to me, but I remember hearing at one point somewhere that the same crowd that shouted Hosanna mm-hmm. was shouting crucify him yep. Absolutely. a few days later. Absolutely. Like you can't be obedient to God for the crowd. <clears throat> right, right. Because mm-hmm. as soon as you fail to meet the crowd's expectations, Absolutely. the crowd will turn on you. Yeah. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, that crowd won't be there when we're standing before the the, the judgment seat of Christ to experience the reward of our faithfulness. It's like, yeah. it's, it's gonna, it, what have you done with what I gave you is going to be a conversation of one mm-hmm. on one. Yeah. And so anyway, just, I don't know, I, I thought That's that good. might fit because where do we compromise or where, I think the thing about ambition, what does ambition do when it becomes self-driven? It's, yeah. I need this or right. I need, I, I don't know. What do y'all? Uh, yeah, I, I think there, there's this, the tension between healthy ambition and unhealthy ambition. Yeah. It, it's this uh, unhealthy ambition is saying, man, like, yeah, this is, I need this. It's like, it's all about what I need. I think about immediately uh, the scene in scripture. Uh, I think it's in Matthew midway is um, Jesus is talking to Peter and Peter, Jesus says on the scene, hey, who do y'all think I am? Who, 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 does, who does everyone say I am? He says, oh, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah, blah, blah, blah. But now who do you say I am? Yeah. Well, you're, you're the son of God. Awesome, Peter. Great answer. I'm going to build my church on you, right? Yeah. The very next verse, like I think it's verse 21 to 22, the very next verse, uh, Jesus is saying, hey, y'all, I'm going to have to leave. I'm going to have to go. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I got I to gotta do what, I, what I'm supposed to be doing here. Right. Peter says, no, you ain't. You can't do that. He starts rebuking him. Right. And immediately afterwards, like Peter was the star of the show in one scene. In the very next moment, Jesus says, get behind me. He's like, the like you, yeah. bro, what are you doing? Right, yeah. And I think what happened with Peter is this unhealthy ambition, like just wanting something to... Uh, <clears throat> I, I think what, what I'm saying is that it's it's being able to separate my identity from my role, mm-hmm. um, but it's also this idea of when I'm in unhealthy uh, uh, ambition, there's some some things that I don't like living in my limits, mm-hmm. right? When when there's unhealthy ambition, sure. like yeah. I don't like living within my limits. Jesus was saying that I'm only here for a specific amount of time to do a specific yeah. thing, That's and good. this is the limit that we have. Peter is saying, no, 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 no. Like you're you're a s- source of comfort for me. We want right. to be with you. Like right. you, I want 
to go outside wow. of this limit. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I want you yeah. to compromise your I limit you for my for me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Right? Like That's, I need oh, you to, to so what we, I feel like what Ooh. I notice in my own life is when I'm in those moments of unhealthy ambition, I have a hard time, just like a approval, I have a hard time saying no. Mm. So I'm saying That's yes good. to a lot yeah. more things that are one outside of my limits and not in my design. Right. So I'm like, Oh, like you, you talk about the Instagram and, and the Facebook stuff. Let me try to be this person. Let me try to be right, the next right, this right. guy. Let me try to be this. And it's just like, whoa, this is not who I am. Though. Right, that's that's yeah. not. It's not authentic to me. So that's kind of yeah, my little way in. I heard, oh, go ahead, whatever. I was just gonna say too, like you know, the fascinating thing about all of this is when Jesus demonstrated the kingdom, crowd showed up. Yeah, I'm, you know, I don't want to yeah. hear anybody yeah. hear what I'm not saying. The crowds are, are right. not bad. Yes. Influence is not bad. Yes, it's the question is what's driving the train. Yes, yeah. Go so ahead. Did, 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 it's, it's part of you said that you set me right up. I, I, I wrote this yeah. out. I heard a quote that was, "Don't follow the crowd, follow the calling." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if mm-hmm. you can stay focused on, on. your calling on. and who you are individually, something that I've I've really been passionate about lately. And every time I sit down and talk with people, I want to just help them identify, man, what is it that you're called to do? Yeah. What is yeah. the specific gifting yeah. you have? Have. Yeah. What is that niche? Why are you so passionate about yeah. this? Is because maybe God wired you that That's way, right. and so I almost feel like as a as a leader, our role and our job is to draw attention to the other members of the body of Christ. Yes, and Absolutely. just say, hey, listen, you Absolutely. may think the person with the microphone or the one who's passionate or the one who's preaching is the most important. I would beg to differ. It's There's so many story. people yeah. in the body of Christ who have so many gifts, mm-hmm. and some people who are sitting on gifts who don't even you know mm-hmm. dive into those gifts because they're like, mm-hmm. I want your gift. I want your gift. I want what you have. I want to be able to do that. But if we can just stop for a second to see the importance of just how powerful it is to, to study, to grow, and to understand our calling, like you said, the crowd, whatever that crowd looks like, they'll show up, you know? So, mm. Kyle, if I hear you correctly, are you saying that we should be sharing our platform with others? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Are, are you saying, is that what you're saying? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Oh, okay. Like a collaboration. <laughs> That's <laughs> called Kingdom, right? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What 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 else? Anything else we want to weigh in on this? Because I I'm, we want to switch gears for a little bit. But what else? Man, that was good. Oh, that is good. Yeah. I'm chewing. Y'all, y'all y'all said some stuff that I took the way in my heart. Like, okay, Lord, let's unpack that one. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Man. let me go in my prayer closet right. before we go uh, back I, to this. I podcast. love that though. That's the yeah. rawness. I yeah. mean, that's the rawness. Yeah. We, well, you know, one of the things we've been doing. We were in sermon prep um, this past week and. Weirdly, we're we're diving into the story on the Good Samaritan, yeah. and so this topic is like real, is hitting home for me, mm-hmm. and and I believe that he's drawing him into this this conversation. Jesus is drawing the expert in the law into this conversation to ask the right question, and mm-hmm. the question is first of all, before we get to what am I supposed to do, he's asking the question, well, well, who who have, what have I said about you? Like yeah. what what do I say about you? And mm-hmm. and I think that we've got to start there. What do I say about you? The second question we're wrestling with is well. Who is he calling my attention to? Yeah. Like, what what is he calling my attention to, or who? And then the la- last question, finally, is well, well, who's he called me to be in that moment? Yeah. Right. And I think that if we can kind of stay in that that tension a little bit, um, the story that jumps out besides the Good Samaritan is the the Jesus. Uh, you guys were talking about uh, influence of Jesus and how. Jesus just finished preaching his uh, greatest sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, right? Mm-hmm. He's, his greatest sermon, he's got thousands of people. And then there's this scene where he transitions that right from the Sermon on the Mount, he goes down, leaves the crowd, and actually engages this man with leprosy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like literally leaves this huge crowd. So he leaves So he leaves this the moment. 99 yes. to go for the... To go for the one. Oh, okay. And see so the beauty of somebody Jesus... Write Come on, somebody that. should write a song. Write a song so, about it. And, and I think there's, some, there's something there because the problem is we... we kind of overuse that, but the the fact that Jesus would leave the 99 to go to the one shows that however he deals with the one, it's how he's going to deal with the 99. Mm-hmm. That's good. Like, mm-hmm. it's an indicator of how he's going to deal with the 99. Point, and so That's Jesus good. often leaves these moments of impact right. to actually steward his influence. That's and good. I think that that's, that's kind of, as we think of Im- ambition, just kind of checking, am I going after impact or influence? Yeah. I don't know. That's good. I that's think good. you could even go further with it, too, in how he relates to the crowd. Yeah. There's a cycle throughout the Gospels yeah. where Jesus is ministering the kingdom of God, which is mm-hmm. attractive because that's what the world is longing yes. for. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The crowd grows, the crowd grows, the crowd grows. The audience, and then yeah. Jesus takes this crowd and says, now let me talk to you about the cost of following. Mm. <laughs> what it means yeah, man. to be a disciple. And yeah, man. the crowd shrinks pretty quickly. Jesus mm-hmm. was great at shrinking a church. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. I just think about that for a second yep. because he was unapologetic about mm. the cost of the kingdom. Mm. You know, you would think it like maybe the sixth time this has happened, one of the disciples might be like, hey, Jesus, if we're trying to start a movement, 
Maybe you could leave that yeah, last ten percent out yeah. of that. You yeah. said like eat my body, drink right, right. my blood. Just don't yeah, say that. Just don't of, say that. Know, <laughs> right. Can, can we just can we co- not? But can we compromise that? <laughs> right. Can we compromise the cost mm. for the mm. size of the crowd? Absolutely. That's what they think. And I think that's, that's the undercurrent of what we're facing, ministering mm. in, in the time we are in the country we are, is that there there is a this cultural consumerism as it relates to the church mm-hmm. and then and, but there I think that's what I love about the millennial generation mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. I don't want you to hold back the 10% yeah. right right I, yeah. I yeah. want to be called to something right. greater than my yep. own life I, uh, you know I, I think that they they that's why the the up-and-coming generation you know they people say a lot of stuff about them I'm gonna tell you they are the best shot that I think we have seen in my lifetime to actually redeem this country for absolutely. Jesus through the power of because because yeah. of that like yeah I, I want to be called yeah. to more than myself That's I want to be called to sacrifice I'm tired yeah. of consumerism I'm yeah. tired yeah of, I'm tired of it yeah. so anyway For, Forbes has an article that says that by year 2025 millennials will make up 75 percent of the workforce mm-hmm. and as you're talking it's like well what does that look like in our church exactly. what does that look like in the kingdom how do we how do we raise yep. a percentage of people actually yep. you know Choosing Christ, yeah. And you, you said something earlier though that that stood out to me. We talk about, and I, I think it's kind of funny because there's a buzzword that I think spins off of what we're saying. We talk about Christ influence. Mm. And we talk about influence in our own lives. The the irony is the way we view influence today in the social media world is not influence in the term of impact. It's almost like being an influencer, yeah, like an idol. That's good. You know, that's like even I want to yeah. be, I want to be an influencer. I want to be a social media influencer. Yeah. I want to be. So we again are going after that crowd. So I almost think the idea of influence, where it could be a ninety nine or a one, is almost kind of lost its luster or kind of lost its yeah. true definition, mm-hmm. and we forget about man, how much impact am I making in that mm-hmm. one person's life yeah. versus I just want to draw in the crowd to follow me to be yeah. an influencer yeah. in their lives right. you know it's yeah. like it becomes an idol yeah so my kids taught me this Uh-oh. my kids taught me this is my teenagers taught me uh, they were looking at something i was asking i don't know who this person is but they've got whatever amount of followers <laughs> and and so my daughter grabs my phone she starts looking at this account that sent me this follower request whatever she says dad this is uh, this is a, a person trying to hype himself up i said how do you know she said, because he's got thousands and thousands of followers, but if you look at the interactions on his pictures, right. it's always 12 or 13 people. He paid for these f- bot wow. followers. My daughter, wow. my 15-year-old right, daughter right. can spot a scam. Yeah. Try of, you can actually pay to have fake right. followers yeah. so you are labeled an influencer yeah. on social media. That blue check, that's what they want. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, and yeah. I just thought, look at the, the commodity, the, the, mm-hmm. the commodity that influence has become in our generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In our world, in our society, but you already have kids, because mm-hmm. like what kids can always do, they can see right through a fake. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so anyway, I think that's part of the problem with the the you know. There's tons of stuff being put out there about yeah. why millennials are yeah. leaving the yeah, church yeah, in yeah, droves. Yeah. yeah. I'm that's just gonna true. be blunt. Yeah. They're not leaving our church in droves. That's right. They're showing up in droves. <laughs> showing up in buses. <laughs> yeah. In buses. Yeah. In, fact, yeah. in fact, we had a in vans. Yeah, we buses. were just yeah. given a bus. <laughs> Because yeah. we got a line of college students at a local yeah. college that don't right. have transportation that want to get yeah. to the church. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying we have the secret sauce. That's right. Right. That's because right. that's happening. I'm just saying there is yeah. one narrative that these kids are leaving the church. No, they're not. Yeah. They're looking for churches that are going to be raw, that are right. going to be authentic, and that are going to call them to action and right. say, "Let's do something." Yeah. yeah. That's happened all over the country yeah. too, but you don't hear that story. Yeah. True. Mm-hmm. That's not unique to Freedom Life. Yeah. yeah. But there's like this picture. I'm like, no, man. We just got to raise the standard. Right. Stop yeah. apologizing about what the gospel is. Absolutely. Stop apologizing about the cost of the kingdom. Come on. Exactly. Oh, okay, I'm gonna stop. Right? I hear that's passion. good. Oh, yeah. That's good because that's, that's what we need. We need we, that's the type of stuff that I think the millennial generation is hungry for, and I think mm, yeah. most people are hungry for. They want mm. you. You've always. I mean, even early on, you've always mm. said this: raising the standard, and people will rise to that standard. Don't mm. be afraid to raise that bar. And I think it's something that if we don't do, we'll end up looking at a ton of people who had so much potential. But yet they never rose to the top. They never had an opportunity to move forward. And the thing that I, I, you landed on something earlier, Rev, I wanted to make a point about is that while naturally we always focus on perception, what people are really looking for is power. I mm. want to see, and not so much power as like how powerful can I be. Yeah. I want to see if the words that are coming out of your mouth really have power behind. It. Is there fruit? Yeah. Yep. Is yeah. there some fruit? Is yeah. there something that there? Was Jesus. Not, that no, was I, don't, I think All some people long. are looking for that authority and that recognition. But other people, want, I want to see the fruit. I want to see the, the power. Is I want to see proof of it. Yeah. Where is it at? 
that. And if we could just be authentic, Back I think that's what answer. draws in the crowds, <laughs> man. Yeah. Uh, so, so you guys are hitting on this thing that I think, uh, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like when we are operating in uh, areas that are inauthentic to us, it can lead to burnout. It can lead to exhaustion. Absolutely. It can lead yeah. to just... So how do we... If we switch gears for a second, what do we say to the person mm -hmm. who's experiencing exhaustion right now, burnout. Maybe it's burnout in ministry, and we're talking to folks who are not just in ministry. Maybe they are, are experiencing burnout in uh, at their job or exhaustion in their even in their spiritual walk. Like right. how do right. we how do we help those folks in, in in a real way? What what are we thinking? Is the how do you help the person? What do we say to the person who's feeling exhausted? Yeah, this is good. Uh, actually, just a couple of maybe maybe about a month or two ago. Um, I had been doing some study on like the furniture in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Just go like kind of off on a deep tangent, really. Quickly. <laughs> I remember this conversation. I was, this I, good. was I was I was doing some research on the furniture in the tabernacle, and you've got like the altar of sacrifice. You've got the um, the the uh, brazen altar, I believe it is, where, where they where they have to clean after the sacrifice. Right, right. Uh, in the outer courts, then when you get into the inner courts, you got like the table of showbread, the altar yeah. of incense, and you've got the candle stand. And the candle stand really stood out to me that day. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it talked about how every 12 hours the priest had to go back in there and make sure that the candles were still burning. Mm -hmm. And part of that process was they had to trim the wick mm -hmm. um, from the burning that had happened um, overnight. Mm -hmm. And very gently in that moment, the Lord was like, when's the last time you let me trim your wick? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like there's yeah. areas in our lives that are like uh, sometimes there are like habits that develop like there's like the burnout is common like it was doing like the candles were doing what it was supposed mm. to do you know what I'm saying but good, from yeah. like the the it, it was getting wear and tear on it because yeah. it was you know, because yeah. it was lit all night that's, that's what it was right. supposed to do but like the priest had to come in mm. and just trim off those dead areas so it would burn continue to burn as bright as it mm. was when it was first lit yeah. And mm -hmm. very gently in that moment, the Lord was like, hey, dude, when's the last time you let me trim That's your good. wick? That's good. You've been doing all the things I called you to do. You're doing exactly what you're called to do. But your light isn't burning as bright as it used to. Mm. Yeah. And so I was like, OK, Lord, like, show me the areas of my life where residue is starting to build up. That's really where good. I mm. might be getting callous to the things you called me to be sensitive to. That's good. Like, yeah. is it in my marriage? Is it in my ministry? Is it in my job? Like. Like where's the where's the residue yeah. of the of the burnout? Yeah, and so it made me have to say no to some things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I get invitations to come out and sing and preach mm -hmm. and stuff all the time. Right. I turn down right. a lot of them. Good. It's just because like yeah. I just don't want the accumulation of like doing what you're supposed to do and preaching and singing and singing and preaching and preaching and singing and meeting and stuff. To, to build up so bad that I'm not even effective anymore at what mm. I'm supposed to do. I'm mm. a candle and I'm lit, but I'm barely illuminating yeah. anything at all. Mm. That's good. That's so that good, is good, man. man. That's so good. I, I think it's it's man, you're you're hitting on this 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 real tension that oftentimes in ministry or oftentimes in our in our uh, walk, we were talking about this in some <clears> prep too, is just uh getting to a spot where we become numb. Um, and the thing about being numb is that you, you're, you know, if you lose feeling in your hand or you lose feeling in your leg or whatever, you become numb. You don't realize you're numb until those tingle, tingles start yeah. to come back again, like, oh, I'm numb. And so it's almost like, and what's needed, the reason that we become numb is because there's a lack of plop, proper blood flow. Yeah. And so there's almost just this, the Lord's been showing me, we've got to get back to the spot where mm -hmm. the Lord can allow his blood to flow in us. Yep, it's just yep. this idea of get back Love to the that. cross. Get back to just that spot where his blood right. flows like. And so for me, the way I've conceptualized that is into um, when we talk to like couples or things like that, it's always go back to your romance. Mm -hmm. Remember your romance. Remember remember the dance. Like yeah, remember yeah. remember the banter. Remember the flirtation. Like That's remember right. that stuff that yeah. you were like, man, what, what, what was the love like? What Get back to, for me, the Lord is saying get back to play. Like get back yeah, to like, good. man, can you Absolutely. dance with me a little bit? Like yeah. play with me a little bit. Smile with me a little bit. Yeah. Like stop taking yourself so <laughs> serious. Yeah. Right, yeah. it's yeah. like yeah. just yeah. get back to and I, and I think I just think that yeah we have a, a scope of influence here in um, the seven five seven that's like that's great like you can walk in any any store pretty yeah. much and it's like yeah hey I don't know who you are but you wave at me and things like that but because you've seen me preach but the thing that I have to realize in myself is that I can't take myself that seriously oh right. I'm somebody's pastor or I'm somebody's right. I'm somebody's daddy I'm somebody's husband. 
first and foremost, I'm a child of God. That's yeah, it. Right. Certain, and and yeah. really what my dad wants is not for me to just be doing stuff, yeah. but to spend time with me. So, so that's yeah. it. Yeah. I love yeah, it. Man. I'll just say, you know, we I think about two um practical things. I think I can mm. think about a few people in my in my head right mm. now that I've had conversations with that may not have like a, a scope of leadership yeah. that we share. Yeah. But they just have some day-to-day things that can really cause them to be exhausted. And then how do you how do you deal with that? You know, whether you're married or you're single. Right. Um, you know, and, and a couple of things I've thought about just too, even in, in my own life, you know, just walking through some of the practical things that I've done is, you know, sitting down talking with my spouse, talking with my wife mm-hmm. and like, hey, I need to I need to talk with you about just some rhythms I think I probably need in order to decompress, in order to just yep. kind of yep. be with you, to That's get good, back man. to that romance, you know, just to kind of mm-hmm. not escape, but to almost put some things on pause for a second so I can just kind of catch my breath yep. for a moment yeah. so yep. I can just re yeah. reintroduce those things back in my life. Um, and then I, I thought about, I can't remember where I read this from. It must have been in some book lately, but... I got to ask myself the question, am I spending time on things that will sustain me or constantly things that will drain me? Mm -hmm. Like, is it always just the things that will drain and just keep taking things out of me? And and am I replenishing? And I got to put that into my rhythm, too, and and, and have her support in that, too. Prayer of the word, what you talked about, you know, making sure I'm spending that adequate time in in prayer. And then one that I feel like is a buzzword now, Mm. but I don't know if many people, and I put myself out there, you know, I'm coming back and forth on this, too, if many people will jump in head first on this is like counseling is yeah. going to get counseling. <laughs> and I, I would almost say, because I know a lot of people are going back and forth on it. Yeah. A good first step is, especially if you're involved in ministry or involved in church, anything like that, is just finding a good mentor, yeah. mm-hmm. having yeah. somebody as a good first step just to talk with about some of these things, yeah. somebody you trust yeah. that will give you wise counsel. Yeah. And then they could possibly say, Hey, you need some additional counseling. Yeah. You know, I'll walk with yeah. you there. I'll take you there. Yeah. I'll do that. You know, it's yeah. getting those first steps so that you can find, you know, a healthy place to keep going. So you can be there for your family. You can support your kids. So you can enjoy the life you have, you know, and and, and just keep moving forward. So. That's good, man. Yeah. That's good. That's it. Man. Yeah. You can't give what you don't have. That's, that's right. Absolutely. It's, I think that's the, the heartbeat behind all of this. And that's what I've had to learn the hard way, yeah. right? Uh, by mm. trying to do it and then crashing and burning and then going to the counselor and then spending the co-pays for, you know, <laughs> lengthy amounts of time right, once right. a week. But you know what? It's the greatest investment I've ever made into my future yeah. and my family is because yeah. if if you don't know, if you don't have your identity from Christ, how are you going to... The, well, one, you will try to get your identity from something else. Yeah. Things, yeah. What do you and then how are you going to teach other people how to get their identity from Christ? Right, right. You can't get what you don't have. You know, mm-hmm. Jesus, before he ever did a single thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said it. Mm-hmm. I'm first and foremost, I'm a child of God. That's right. Before Jesus yep. did anything, before he ever Son, preached a sermon, yep. before he ever healed mm-hmm. the sick, before he ever did a miracle, he gets baptized in obedience, and the Father says, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then to circle back to the beginning of the conversation, when he was tempted, the very first temptation, if you're the son of God, after 40 days, mm-hmm. he's starving. Yeah. Literally. Mm-hmm. Turn this rock into bread. Mm-hmm. If you're the son of God, that's the temptation of the enemy. If you're the son of God, right? But he's got something that the devil doesn't realize how effective it is. He's got his identity. Yeah. He, and, and so his response to the devil, if you're the son of God, turn this stone to bread. His response yeah. is what? His response is, mm. it is written, man should not live on bread alone, but on every mm-hmm. word that proceeds mm-hmm. from the mouth of God. And, and we talk about this a lot. I've preached about it a hundred times. I'll keep preaching about it till I die. Yeah. yeah, it's real. The devil left a word out. Mm. Yeah. Because the devil said to him, if you're the son of God, but he said, listen, I know my identity. I know who I am. I know who I am. I know yep. whose I am. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know why I am. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I don't need to prove to myself, yep. to you, or to the world, whether it's ambition, mm-hmm. appetite, mm-hmm. approval. Mm-hmm. He already had. Yeah. I think that right answer right there deals with all that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So anyway, yep. I just I just want to leave that there. That's For me, it's good. So I got to go back to who who I am and whose yeah. I am and why. Absolutely. And if Absolutely. I if I don't start there, there will always be a temptation to Absolutely. to get it from the wrong place yeah. and to teach it the wrong way. Yeah. And that's Yo. gonna end the wrong way. Yeah. You, know? that's Yo, good. you just you just triggered that thought. It's good. How yeah. he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm-hmm. Like bread is is temporary. Mm-hmm. Like it only sustains you for a moment. You're gonna yeah. have to go back and get more bread. Yeah. The word sustains you forever. Ever. Yeah. And it's so good. it's important not to build our approval off of temporary Come truths. On. Like, yeah, I'm a good singer today, but in 10 years from now, people might not feel the same about me. Right, right. But I will always be a beloved son of God. Yeah. Like, mm. so build right. my confidence yeah. in 
Yeah. The so word that mm-hmm. never changes. Yep. That's on, so man. good. Yep. Man, I, I just wanted to, I think it's, you know, as we get ready to, to end off, just this a, a spot to um, just encourage anyone Absolutely. who's dealing with exhaustion, specifically the pastors. I mean, I, hearing about this pastor who was an associate pastor yeah. at this mega church yep. Um, yep. To, to commit suicide really, really broke my heart um, yeah. because, it, you know, obviously this is what we do. And and so just just speaking a word of blessing over over you that you, you okay. Rev, you say this often is that you're doing better than you think you are. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think that if we can get that in our head, but yep. I also just want to encourage um, the ministers or the pastors, anybody in leadership, ask for help. Like we don't, we don't, we don't have to do this thing uh, alone. And I think some of us, we, we minimize kind of what we're going through and yeah, think I can true. just, I can power through this and I can push through this and I'll be okay. But all it takes is a moment. Mm-hmm. All it takes is one moment to, man, just, Wow, just affects so many families and affects so many lives. So yeah. um, I just yeah. just speak a blessing over that. And Amen. and actually, man, if we could just if we could just pray, um, end off this episode a little different. Um, I ask uh, Pastor Brian if you would just pray for us. Oh man, okay. thank you, man. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> All right. Well, um, wherever you are, if you're driving or um, you know cooking dinner or anything like that, obviously don't close your eyes. But if you can <laughs> close your eyes, just to kind of center in on this mm-hmm. moment, yeah. focus in on this mm-hmm. moment. Uh, let's do that. Um, our Father and our God, we, we thank you uh, just for uh, the identity in you that you have blessed us with. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, God, for seeing us as your sons and your daughters yes, Lord. and nothing else. Yes, Lord. Like mm-hmm. if, if we don't ever perform anything else, if mm-hmm. we don't ever reach tens of thousands of people, Father, thank you that you see us thank as you. a son and a daughter. And thank you that that was enough mm-hmm. to cause you to leave eternity to come down and sacrifice your life for us, just to be in eternal relationship with us, Father. We thank you. Father, we uh, we just speak peace over uh, everyone's Mm. minds who's listening to this, those who Mm. may be wrestling um, with with, uh, thoughts, Mm. uh, with the lies of the enemy. Father, we thank you that uh, your truth will be the thing that echoes the most in our Mm. hearts and in our ears, Father. You You said that you would keep us in perfect peace, those whose minds are stayed Mm. on you, Father. Mm. So thank you for sending gentle reminders of your presence and just of your nearness and your closeness, Father. Thank you for the Jeremiah 29, 11 that you've mm-hmm. spoken over all of our lives, mm-hmm. of uh, plans of a hope and a future, not thank to harm Lord. us, but to bring us to an expected end, Father. So thank you uh, just for the plan and the yes, purpose Lord. and the destiny and the uniqueness that you have for each person uh, present in this room, those who are listening mm-hmm. now, those who are listening in the future, Father. Thank you for seeing us right where we are and caring enough about us that you would put the eternal, the, you would put everything on hold just to come and see about us. Thank you, God. Mm-hmm. And we thank you so much. Mm-hmm. We thank you so, so much. Yes, Lord. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.